Cool. Hey, and we're live, so I'm going to back out into the darkness. Have fun. Thanks for being here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. All right, let's see. Get the chat up so I can make sure we are good to go. Awesome. All right, so we're live. Um, so... Um, really quickly, I just wanted to say a uh, huge shout out and thank you to Storm Giant Games for uh, hosting Crowd Control Expo. This is super awesome. Um, my name is Anthony. We're from uh, I'm from Anima, Anima Games. I'm the owner, um, and with me is my buddy Greg uh, or Toofs. Um, he's my creative director and co-founder. So um, today we're going to actually kind of give you a two for one special. Um, we're going to go over uh, a little bit of terrain crafting. That's what I'll be doing here and showing you some of the basics and just how ridiculously easy it is to do this stuff. Um, and then uh, Greg is actually gonna be doing some mini painting. So Greg, you wanna do a little intro? Yeah. So my name's Greg, or Toofs. Um, I'm gonna be working on a couple different things. I have a little bit of detailing work I need to finish on this guy. Um, but I'm gonna be spending most of my time working on these two. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Awesome. So just to show you guys a couple of things on the uh, terrain side, um, I wanted to show you a couple of pieces that I've recently crafted um, just to sort of show you the possibilities. Um, so this stuff is not hard at all. It's uh, honestly, it's a few hours of work for a, a ton of pieces like this. Oh, we've got some, some fun dog here there. Um, so this is just a, some basic uh, foam stuff, and I'll show you what I've, what I've crafted this out of in just a second. Um, a little bit of paint, and then probably a dollar's worth of stuff from like a, a hobby store, like Hobby Lobby, if you have that, or um, you know, other types of craft stores. Um, one of the biggest pieces that I recently made uh, was this big boy, um, and it was a lot of fun. It took me a couple of days to build. Um, but it's a few pieces of stacked foam that look like this underneath, just your basic pink foam. Um, and a little bit of craft rocks and moss and stuff like that. It's pretty basic. Um, and yeah, a lot of fun to build. So um, I'll show you, I'll be building a small tower over here. And uh, we'll just kind of be chatting about that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, of course, feel, um, we're watching the Twitch chat. So feel free to throw them up there. And then um, if, about mini painting or about terrain crafting, whichever you want. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of sw switch back and forth. That way you guys can see the different things we're building. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask questions. Um, so Greg, do you want to show off the minis you're gonna be painting? Yeah, well just on the topic of like crafting stuff, um, here's like a piece that I made using pink foam as well. A little rock golem. It's just all pink foam, a little bit of flock, and pretty much just dry brushing. Something super simple to make. Looks good. It you looks can make very, cool very little uh, moss pieces if you mix like XPS glue uh, with uh, just basic flocking. Let it dry, it all shrinks and solidifies and makes like nice moss. It's so good. I can't wait to abuse that thing against you. Um, so I've actually, so to give you a little background on this, um, so we started running a D&D campaign about, um, my, my first D&D campaign about two years ago, um, and we just, as of, uh, Thursday, um, I'm, I'm the DM, uh, Greg is one of my players. Um, and we've got about, uh, four other players, five other players. How many players? Five. Four. Um, six people, I think. um, so we've been running a campaign, uh, almost every single week for two years. Um, and it has been absolutely crazy. And my obsession with all of this stuff got started because one of my other players bought me a flash forge 3d printer which has led to an insane obsession. So I'll show you guys a couple of things that I have printed, uh, starting with some little baby guys, like uh, like this, just a little basic Hero Forge, fun stuff. Um, but that really only just barely started the obsession. Um, if you've ever seen our Instagram, it's uh, anima.games, um, or our website, which is also anima.games, no.com, nothing like that. Um, we printed some other crazy stuff like this massive terrasque from Artisan Guild. Um, this thing is like three bricks. It is so heavy, but it's super, super cool. Um, Greg, I'm not gonna lie, I'm super excited to throw this at you one day. I'm super excited to paint one of those. 
um, speaking of you paint jobs, um, this is a uh, really kick-ass Baylor um, that Greg did, uh, what, like a year ago or so? Almost, yeah, yeah, about a year, a year and a half. And the detail on it is just nuts. I mean, you can see, I have, I'm 6'2", so my hands are massive. This thing is enormous. Um, just the detail on it, the cool chain hanging off of it. Let's see if we can maybe, this axe and these skulls, it's... It's ridiculous. So one of the things that we do is, and if you guys um, ever want to see like better pictures of this on our social media, we have like professional photos of pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to ex exactly going to say. Um, so one of the things that we do is, is um, uh, our business is we actually, we 3d print th these from a lot of different really cool artists, like um, artisan guild, Lord of the print, um, Duncan. Chattanooga. Yeah. Art that's an artisan guild piece. And, and, their beholders are absolutely incredible. Excuse me. Their eye tyrants are absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, so we, we 3D print these guys um, and paint them up if you want. We leave them unpainted uh, if that's kind of your thing, if you really want to get into the painting world and, and do your own thing. Um, but yeah, so uh, um, Greg, if you wanted to kind of get started on painting, I figured I'd talk about the Kickstarter really quick uh, and then make some bricks and start building a little tower. Um, we have so much time. This is awesome. Um, so uh, while Greg is doing some painting, uh, oh, Adam, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> nice to talk to you again, man. Yeah, I'm really glad that you're happy with the quality of the prints. Um, Andrew, uh, yeah, so these are definitely um, for a, a unit of this size. These are, they, they come in pieces. Actually, I have somewhere right here. Uh, here's an unpainted version of the same Tarask, and you can actually see because I haven't filled any of the any of the gaps. Let me switch cameras really quick. See if this will help see a little bit better. Um, so, with the comparison of this guy, um, you can actually see some of the gaps still in the different large pieces um, because we use an AnyCubic Photon to 3D print these. The, the detail is just ridiculous. Um, you get some absolutely killer, killer detail on these. Um, but yes, they are um, printed in pieces with that size. Um, and then uh, I come back and I fill them with green stuff or, or need a tight, you might know it as, um, do some priming and things like that just to make it look really kind of cohesive and solid. Um, and so you end up with uh, a lot smoother lines along, um, oops, uh, along these edges um, that just makes it feel like a more complete unit. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I hope that answered your question. Um, one of the nice things is, is that I ordered a um, Phenom by Piopoli, and hopefully I didn't butcher that name, um, and the build plate on the thing is ridiculous. And I'll actually be able to print one of these, I believe, as one solid piece, um, which will just be absolutely insane. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so uh, I figure I'll really quickly actually just start, um, I'll tell you guys a little bit about the Kickstarter, and while I'm doing that, um, <laughs> Uh, Andrew says he wants to uh, torture his players with that model, and I also want you to torture your players with that model. I support this. <laughs> There's nothing this like the look on everyone's face when you drop one of those on the table. <laughs> yeah, funny enough, this uh, this Baylor is the b bag for our campaign, um, known as the Dread King. He is the king of all demons in the abyss, uh, and Greg is just a few sessions away from having to fight this bad boy. Um, in the in the uh, Discord earlier, I showed off uh, I showed off your storm giant, Greg. Oh, nice. Uh, this one came from uh, Comet Lord Miniatures. Uh, this isn't one we sell, but the model was just way too cool to pass up. Had to print this and then uh, hand it over to you, so so Greg can paint it and show off all of its awesomeness. Um, yeah, Drav. So the list of three D modelers that I use, I'll, I'll what I'll do is after the um, in the uh, the convention chat or in the mini chat, um, I'll go ahead and I'll post the modelers that we use, and I, we also have it on our website. Um, but the those main modelers that we currently license from are um, Artisan Guild, um, Duncan Shadow Luca. That's kind of his nickname. Um, uh, Lord of the Print. Um, it, MZ4250, I think is one of the ones I haven't shown any of his models, but if you're into 3d printing at all, you've probably seen, he's the guy who, uh, his name's uh, Miguel, I believe, um, he's gone and, and printed nearly damn near every single mini from each of the various, uh, adventure books and, and supplements and guides for DMV, like all of the official ones. Um, I think he's working his way through, um, I think he just finished Mordenkainen, Mordenkainen, whatever, um, just recently. 
Um, but yeah, after after the whole thing, um, I'll I'll put links up to any of the um, supplies that we use, um, any of the printers, um, or yeah, any of the modelers that we use to actually print these guys. So if you're into three D printing, if you have questions about three D printing, feel free to hit us up afterwards. I'm um, I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I absolutely love it, and if you want to get into it, please just let me know, and I'm I'm happy to share. Like it's it's a uh, the, this hobby is so much fun. Anybody who can and wants to spend some time doing this, you absolutely should. Um, so let me switch over to this other camera so I can just briefly talk a little bit about what I'm going to be doing with this bad boy. Um, so this is called a hot wire cutter. It was introduced to me by my buddy Greg. <laughs> um, and of course, the uh, if, you're, if you're into crafting, you might have seen something, uh, a channel called Black Magic Craft. Um, so I've got a couple of his tutorials and what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to create um, a little bit piece of terrain to sort of supplement this, um, just a nice little tower, um, an area near the end of our campaign that we're currently at. Um, so just a little something cool, um, which I'm going to build on top of this, uh, which I just recently cut. Uh, it was surprisingly a slight pain in the butt to cut a round circle from this foam stuff. Um, if you've never done foam crafting before, um, this is called, oh, I'm gonna get it wrong, F XPS? I believe it's XPS. XPS. I extru extruded polystyrene foam. Um, it is it is construction like like um, uh, insulation foam. Um, so it this comes is- in like pink and blue, sometimes white. If you're in yeah. the UK and other places, it's probably white or blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's, there's also a green one, I wanna say. Um, but you're looking for XPS. That's that's basically what it's extruded polystyrene. Um, you can find this at like uh, normally like Lowe's or Home Depot or any sort of like um, the uh, the brand we use is called Foamular. Yeah, yeah. And I had a sticker around here somewhere to show you, but oh well. Um, so sometimes you can find them in like conveniently sized uh, boards, like double the size of this. I cut this one up. Um, uh, if you can find them at this size as opposed to like a really small one um, or bigger, do that. Spend a little bit more money because the price that they charge for like a small square like this is insane. It's like two to five times the cost. Lowe's has the green, yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you guys a little bit of what I'm going to do with just this and then uh, maybe I'll hand it over to uh, Greg for a little bit so you can kind of show off some of your, your painting that you're doing. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just making bricks. Um, if you order anything from Amazon and you want to get into crafting and you get styrofoam that looks like honestly any kind of styrofoam, save it. This stuff is great fodder for, um, um, crafting bricks. I'm crafting little junk pieces of terrain. Um, you can put glue over this, uh, and basically kind of make it a little bit more bulletproof. And then when you want to get into the really nice stuff, that's where you can use this foamular, this XPS foam. Um, to get some really, really nice detail. Um, so what I've done is I've got this hot wire cutter running right now. Hopefully I don't snap a wire, which you'll see what that means if I do it. Um, but I'm basically just slicing this into little pieces. Uh, oh, let me switch cameras for you. Um, do, 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 do. Technology is hard. Um, so I'm switching this into little pieces that are actually going to end up like about yay big. Um, if I can see that, glare is hard. Um, but basically, we'll end up slicing them up and then re-gluing them together, and you get this super cool effect. Um, yeah, Mod Podge, exactly, yeah. Um, I use a, a combination of Mod Podge and black paint, uh, a little trick I learned from Black Magic Craft. Um, glue these suckers together with a hot glue gun or with um, um, like Elmer's glue, your just kind of basic glue, like uh, this stuff. Um, I use this stuff all the time. Um, hot glue works, but it does, if you're not careful, it does tend to melt the uh, foam, which can kind of be a pain in the butt. Um, so we're just gonna glue these together. I'm actually gonna build like a nice little um, um, broken down tower. And so the first piece of that is just cutting up bricks. So while I'm cutting up a ton of bricks, I've already started this. Um, Greg, why don't you kind of show off some of your uh, mini painting skills? Sure. So with this guy right here, right now I'm just kind of blocking in some of the flesh tones. Let's see if you can see there. So I just finished the face, working on like the arm and stuff, uh, like the hands, that's pretty much it. Um, 
Then I have a couple of the metallics to do. I might add a little bit more detail to this cloak. And I have the rest of the staff to finish. Um, I'm trying to make him match another one I did. But I'm trying a little bit different of uh, techniques. This one I used a bunch of different washes and built up uh, a bunch of different layers. Um, this one I'm trying to do a little bit quicker. I probably only spent about three hours on this guy as opposed to probably eight hours on this one. Um, I am trying a interesting, like, I'm making like my own version of a contrast paint on a few different pieces. I'm taking, uh, what's the name of this paint? It's the Monument ones. They're super high pigment. And I'll mix it with a, a combination of this flow aid I made of one part matte medium, one part mm -hmm. water, and then a couple drops of your basic like dishwasher detergent. And it really lets everything flow in and causes it to be transparent. So if you were to dry brush, like on the face, you probably can't see very well. Um, you, you can see better on this one. Uh, all of the like little highlighting and shadows shine through after you apply that paint. And it's not quite the same function of a contrast paint like that was used on like this there. But I actually like the results a lot better. Um, I did something similar for this beholder for Eye Tyrant as well. This um, one, somebody had a question for you, by the way. Yeah, what's that? Um, are you using acrylics or special paints? Uh, acrylics, pretty much strictly acrylics. Uh, with this guy, I use a couple oil washes to get into like these cracks, get like the detail, like from the shadow under the eye, uh, around like the teeth. I use some oil washes, um, which if you want to make on your own, are, they're amazing, but really smelly. I would suggest making sure you have proper ventilation and all of that. Uh, but mostly acrylic paints, yeah. Um, <laughs> somebody saw your uh, somebody saw a trinket hanging out over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really have to finish them. I want to work on my non-metallic metals a little bit more before I finish trinket. That one is going to be so awesome. This is a fun little one. I also have to find like a nice base for him. Maybe something like you know, this is a base that fell off something else. That's awesome. Yeah, this guy was originally on here, and then I foolishly dropped him. Oh yeah, somebody really likes the uh, the holder. I, I love that tool so much. Artisan Guild does a fantastic job. It's so good. I have like I have like five or six of them printed and sitting behind me that I'm ready to ship to a few customers, and I'm I'm very excited to show those off. Oh, they asked, uh, how do you seal the seal the models after? So I use testers. Um, hold on, give me one second. I'll grab it. Running away, running away. So I use testers spray lacquer. It's called. Uh, so it's one of these guys comes in a small can. It's originally meant for like models for like cars and stuff like that. For people who are using like enamel paints. Uh, it does a fantastic job of just giving you a nice matte finish. And if I need something to be shiny or something, which I'm going to do on the beholder, I'll just take some, uh, what is it called? Like glossy lacquer and put it on. Like if I want the eye to be shiny or something. Any more questions? So good. So good. Um, here's, here's let's a, see. Here's a piece that we had commissioned that we're finally going to be Sending out. That Shadow Dragon's so awesome, man. I'm so excited to get that sent out. This thing was the biggest pain on the butt. <laughs> it's, just so, it's, it's so delicate. Yeah. It's very detailed. The, uh, yeah, it's kind of funny. That, along with this cool model, um, this uh, Hydra, is... Um, <laughs> so these guys are then uh, ordered from the same person. I finished painting this guy up and I'm super happy about it. This model actually is super cool because the Hydra has magnetic heads. Um, so 
I was really proud of this paint job. Um, I'm newer to painting uh, than Greg is. I was really happy with this. Finished up the order. He was just finishing up the Shadow Dragon. And then I realized that I painted the wrong size model. So now I'm having to paint it again with the larger size. <laughs> so goofs of the trade. Oh, somebody had a question for you. Um, do you print those stones or get them somewhere? <laughs> so the stones for the bases? Uh... These are actually your standard, like, paving stones. Um, I have a box full of them, so you can see before I paint them. But no, they're not printed. Those are actual rock. They're heavy as hell. Yeah, they are. Which is um, great because it weighs down your mini and keeps it stable. But also a bad thing because you easily break it. On the, uh, the storm giant that he made, it's got this huge slate rock. And then... Yeah. Funny that I said rock. Straight up rock. <laughs> down. Yep. And then uh, this one is also just a couple of those bad boys just kind of slapped on there. It's our master technique is slapping things onto things. Um, okay. Of all the minis you have worked on, which one or which ones are your absolute favorite? Um, hmm. Probably, so I have two. That Beholder, for sure, is up there. I'm actually giving this one away to one of our giveaway winners. But I love this guy. I'm definitely going to have to uh, print another one of these and paint it up. That one was a blast working on. I learned a lot working on him. That was the first time I successfully used uh, oil washes. Uh, the next one would probably be a tie between, this is an R miniature, uh, I bought this one, but let me follow, let me, he's a little bit bigger, gotta get the scan frame. <laughs> this purple worm. The thing is ridiculous. He's a beefy boy. Uh, so I, I just love the colors and the contrast I got on him, and I did the moss base as well for him. Um, and then he's tied with this kind of two-piece illithid riding a Umber Hulk. I think out of the ones that you that I've seen you do, it's a tie for me between the ones you've done. It's a tie between that one, the illithid Umber Hulk, and uh, the uh, Storm Baylor. Giant. Or, yeah. uh, the Storm Giant, actually. Now the Baylor, I love because. I feel like that might be my favorite model of all time forever and ever. <laughs> it's no, it, it can't count because it's too good. Yeah. Um, mine, the favorite that I've built is probably this. It's not technically a mini, <laughs> but it is a 3D printed ship, which took me weeks to build and paint. And the detail on it ended up being super cool. Um, the fact that we got to use this in game was probably one of the most satisfying things I've ever got to work on. Um, yeah, that, was, then, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and then my other... To the heart of the Storm Giants. That was awesome. Um, and then my other favorite that I personally painted was this super cool Ice Dragon. I think I got this model from the Lost Dragons Kickstarter. Um, I'm just absolutely in love with the paint job. Let me switch cameras because it's, it's a little bit sexier. Um, up close. Um, just some of the the fun paint and just really kind of goofing off and not caring exactly how the airbrushing turned out. I just, I'm very pleased with it. So those are my two favorites. And then if you didn't see this ridiculous Baylor, this was probably gonna be my favorite of all time forever. Greg, you did an insane job with this. That, that's, <laughs> that thing I probably spent close to 30 hours on. Seven months later, this thing's so good. Look at that! Look at that! It's so good. Just the detail. Oh, I love it. I love it. The, the, webcam, oh, yes. the webcam does not do that thing justice. It really doesn't. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah! Somebody said I need the Baylor like next week. <laughs> uh, well, we do sell them if you want to get one. Um, okay, so uh, I have made a but ton of bricks and even though this looks like a lot, it's almost nothing. There's, you need so many bricks for this. Um, so I'm gonna keep 
building on this little uh, power train. I'm just going to start gluing them on. Um, and while I'm doing that, um, I figured I'd tell you guys uh, while we're doing this a little bit about our Kickstarter that's coming up. Um, so uh, why don't you guys for just a second watch the master at work. I got a paintbrush. And uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Or I will be right back. Sorry, I cannot see chat right now. So if you're asking questions, I will get back to you soon. But for now, I'm just building up some, of, like blocking in the colors for the flesh. And I may go through afterwards the wash. It's so beautiful. I love that thing so much. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and make a gigantic mess with the glue. Um, everywhere as is ideal. Um, so if I had to say anything about this, like about craft, about crafting, about painting, um, there's obviously like ridiculous levels of painting skill that is like, you cry when you see it because it's so beautiful. See mm -hmm. previously mentioned Baylor. Um, but like Stop. getting into this is so ridiculously easy. Like this, I haven't been crafting more than, I mean, what, like, Three months? Yeah. Does that sound right? Maybe, I, yeah, three months. It couldn't, it couldn't run. And I built stuff like this, which just looks so good on the table. Like, I'm in love with it. I, I thought it looked awesome. Um, so if, the, if I had to, like, give, like, one takeaway for anybody out there who wants to start this, just pick up a couple of pieces and just make some dumb shit. Yeah, like, language. <laughs> you can grab just a couple simple things and be able to do so much. It's like one of these like Ulfa blades. You don't need a wire cutter. This, you can do everything we have shown with just this. It's like this and I, some pink foam. Yep. I've also got mine handy just in case. <laughs> always, always, always. Just be careful. Don't cut yourself. Yeah. I've sliced myself a couple times. Um, my wife has been yelling at me because I have so many cuts on my hand because I'm so clumsy. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, seriously, just grab some glue, get one of these things because it, it'll do everything that you need. Get some foam. I mean, honestly, just steal the packing stuff that you have in, in Amazon packages and go for it. Um, it's amazingly ridiculously easy to build this stuff um so while i am gluing uh brick after brick after brick after brick after brick after brick after brick, brick, brick 1000 years later um so we are uh gonna be launching a kickstarter in i'm thinking a month or so um we were actually gonna launch at the beginning of april but you know then global pandemic somebody's game of plague ink got a little too real um so uh so we're gonna be launching a kickstarter probably at the end of what is this is this april right now march yeah, april <laughs> april um so probably uh around the beginning of may depending on when my daughter is born um uh, we'll be launching a kickstarter and so that kickstarter is gonna it's gonna be called the crystal corruption um if you follow us on instagram you might have seen a little bit of that stuff um, and basically what, um, what we're creating is a hardcover book primarily, um, of a new, uh, fifth edition adventure. Um, so this will probably get you up to at least level 10. Um, I'm still writing it, so I'm working on some of the details. Um, but the premise behind the story is, um, there is on a continent called Ozimer, which is primarily occupied by dwarves. Um, with some some other occupants, so it's going to be there's going to be a lot of kind of um, Norse sort of Viking themed you know symbols and things like that, which is, I think is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I've been catching up on the show Vikings just to really get some extra inspiration. Um, but the idea is there is a a the one of the bad guys of the campaign is a lovely gentleman named Ulfgar, and I actually have the first print of Ulfgar. Right here. So Ulfgar the Corrupted uh, is a dwarven artificer, and he is a special kind of dwarf from our world. He is a giant dwarf. Now, let's see if I can maybe get that to focus. There we go. Um, so 
if you've seen the, oh, thank you very much, Rimmer. He said, uh, everyone go check out their minis. They're selling out of control. That is true. I have so many minis to make. I have, I, this table was actually covered with like 80 minis earlier and I, I have so many to ship. Um, I'm really glad that I was able to get more resin because I got, I got, uh, I got backlog because I was trying to get supplies. Um, so Ulfgar the Corrupted is one of these gigantic doors. And if you've seen the movie um, uh, Avengers or the, the Infinity War series, I won't I'm not to spoil anything, but there was this dwarf played by, I cannot believe I'm going to forget his name, um, from Game of Thrones. Um, nope, it totally escapes me. I'm so embarrassed. Um, but there's these this gigantic dwarf, and, and I mean huge. Like we're talking, Peter Dinklage, thank you very much. Um, yeah, he is massive. And, and this is kind of a similar race. So this is a descendant um, of something like that, of this very large race of dwarves. And Ulfgar, uh, to understand his character, you basically just need to understand that he is terrified of an unknown, unnamed titan from dwarven lore that comes every few thousand years and destroys um, the larger of these dwarven cities. And this is his driving motivation, is he's terrified of this titan, um, and his past is filled with pain caused by this titan having actually visited a city that he once lived in, and he lost his family because of this. And so the campaign is all about stopping him um, from doing something horrible um, for what he sees as a, as a necessary step um, in order to save all of dwarven kind. And uh, the campaign starts off in a cool little town called Bosca, a little uh, uh, seaside town. Um, and one of the things that we're doing with this campaign, um, oh yeah, so I'll actually, I'll post some pictures in the chat. Um, we only have two of them right now. I only, I've only got printed one of the miniatures. Um, I've got Ulfgar printed, and soon I'll be printing uh, an ancient gold dragon named Glimmerheart. Um, Absolutely beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. And we're going to be doing some really cool kind of action-y poses, uh, poses um, which is going to make these miniatures, I think, super fun. Um, so the, the campaign is essentially um, a little bit open world, a little bit sandboxy, and gives you an opportunity to um, explore this continent of Ozimer, understand the culture, and eventually um, uncover that uh, Ulfgar is doing something that is causing a, corrup a corruption to spread all throughout Ozimer, starting in a, in a, uh, a region called the Emerald Expanse. Um, that corruption is causing these crystalline kind of viral growths to appear all over walls and trees and wildlife and people, and it kind of creates this insanity, and so that's why it's called the crystal corruption. And so your job is both to find him um, and stop him from what he's doing uh, and um, uncover what what's causing this corruption and hopefully find some way to cure it. So I don't want to spoil too much just in case any of you don't end up getting it and end up being players in it. Um, I, I don't want to spoil too much, but the, I really like um, campaigns that are, that are big, that are epic, that feel really, really exciting. Um, I, I'm a writer and that's always been my passion. And so um, one of the things that I'm doing with this campaign is making it so there's a, there's very high stakes. There are, um, the stakes for the people could not possibly be higher. And for you as players, they're really high. And there are, there's a, a couple of really cool and, and kind of scary mechanics I'm introducing specifically for the players that is going to really up the, um, the scare factor. So if you don't solve this problem and you, and you kind of dip your toes and you get involved, it'll have real consequences for your character. Um, long term which can be kind of scary um so I, I because i'm a writer i really like to build this sort of epic narrative that gives you an opportunity to both face really scary epic and i mean sometimes like horror element type things but also um have an opportunity to be one of those epic heroes you know by the end of the campaign i want you to feel like you are one of the avengers you know you are this epic team of and yes, you may be total goofballs and, and mess up the whole time and goof off and, and be ridiculous, but um, you'll have access to allies and abilities and things like that that are are truly, truly epic um, and make you feel... Uh, uh, Greg, you might be able to speak to this in our campaign. I like to bend the rules of D&D &D and occasionally break them just yes. so that... 
<laughs> just so that you can get that feeling of, of being really epic. So I, um, I will say the campaign that we've been in is the most fun I've ever had in D and D. Like <laughs> the right, story is incredible. You. Like the, the mechanics that you introduce are always exciting, and you feel powerful. Yeah, that's and that's my end game. Is always going to be. Um, I want. This is an opportunity. Uh, D and D is an opportunity, in my opinion, to feel incredibly powerful. And really, any any tabletop RPG is is a an opportunity to feel and be more powerful than we are in real life. And so, I like to build a campaign that gives you the opportunity to face dangers that you would never, you know, evil demons opening a portal and taking over the world is not something we're very likely to face in real life. Um, and so then neither is the opportunity to be the epic hero who's going to be able to stop that. Um, so that's, that's what I, I love. I love most about this campaign. Um, and so to, to talk about a little bit of what you're like, what I'm including this. Uh, and so if you, if you end up backing it, what you'll get with it is, um, there's a, uh, a hardcover book that we're going to have with it. So it'll be the same size as the, as the official, um, guidebooks. Um, obviously we're not associated with wizards of the coast or, or, you know, Dungeons and dragons proper. Um, um, we're just gigantic fans, so I just wanted to include an extra adventure for you guys. Um, but uh, so there's the the hardcover book. I'm actually trying to get a really cool um, limited edition, uh, like Kickstarter exclusive um, leather, um, really cool embossed cover. If you if any of you ever played Destiny or um, and got kind of some of the cool journals, there's this gorgeous and like leather embossed um, uh, journal that they released that I fell in love with. And so this is going to be a little bit like that with a very kind of Viking Norse theme, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, so uh, those are, that's going to be the main kind of piece of this. And by the way, if you guys have any questions and uh, please feel free to ask, I, I, obviously we love to talk. So uh, <laughs> we're happy to answer them. Um, whether that's about crafting, about the start or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, um, so the, the, the main piece will be the hardcover book, and, and we'll also include a PDF version, um, which will be, I don't have the pricing nailed down just yet, um, but if you've backed like Nord Games, um, it'll probably be a similar pricing structure. But where this gets really cool is, um, I have a, a kind of a different philosophy about DMing um, and, and creating content for DMs, um, which is that I want to make the entire experience of running a game easier for DMs. Um, I spend hours upon hours upon hours every week crafting, um, crafting, uh, but crafting a, a game so that my players have the time of their life. Because you know, the most satisfying thing for me as a DM is is my players tell me, like Greg just did, that the game is really fun. Like that's the best possible scenario. And um, so what I'm doing with this this guide is not just writing an adventure and including some roll tables and calling it a day. But I'm building in everything I possibly can so that you're prepared. And it's, it's uh, cool descriptions. What might their accents sound like? What might, and not that you have to do the accents, but if you're looking for something, I want to include it. So, oh, whoops. Um, I want to include it. That way you can actually use it. Um, you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to leave that broken tower there. Um, and happy little accident. Happy little accident. Uh, this is a broken tower, so why not? Um, and so, uh, this is going to come with, uh, a lot of content written specifically to make it easier to be a DM for this type of adventure and make it more fun. So you have to spend less time prepping, um, little goofy stuff that, that I often find that I end up doing because an adventure didn't include some detail or minutia, um, with, you know, balancing without trying to go overboard and giving you too much. Um, so... The, the other pieces that we're doing is, is um, we're putting a lot of money and, and hopefully if we, if we hit some cool stretch goals, uh, we'll get to release um, a bunch of um, custom models, uh, custom miniatures um, that, uh, like this one, are specifically built for this game. And I'm going to include some additional lore and some, and some story reasons why if you continue a campaign, whether that's official release stuff from us um, or just a homebrew campaign, um, uh, I'll include things that will let you continue using these miniatures um, if they have this kind of crisp, this corrupted, you know, sort of crystal jutting out of it. Why might this still be in your world at the end of this at the end of this adventure or campaign? 
Um, and so we're going to be crafting tons of these. I've got already about 25 different new miniatures that I'd like to get created. We're working on the first uh, two, mm -hmm. or the first, the second one's almost done, and we're about to start working on the third one. Um, and the suite of them is going to be kind of crazy. Um, so that's going to be the third thing is these custom miniatures. And then depending on kind of how the stretch goals and things go, um, we'll start uh, adding in custom maps, um, item and NPC cards. Um, I'm a huge fan of Griffin Saddlebag. If you guys haven't seen them, go check them out on Patreon, on Reddit. Griffin Saddlebag has some of the coolest NPC and item cards of all time. I'd like to make something that, that can kind of go well with them, um, with those cards, in case, in case that's something that you've got, something that, that will be a nice complement to a set like that. Um, but will help kind of flesh out and again, uh, more DM tools to make your life easier. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and then I've got a few crazy ideas, which if we, if we do really well on the, uh, on the stretch goals, then um, I'll, I'll unlock some, uh, some extra really cool stuff. Um, but uh, all of this is gonna be packaged in some really sexy um, custom packaging that I'm getting designed. Because I want you to be able to, um, I want you to be able to store it obviously in in the, the box that it came from if you want to, and have it be a piece that you can have laying around as a unit and take with you, um, and make it really easy to travel. Again, I'm always thinking, how can I make it easier for a DM to move this thing around to to build this game to run this game? What can I do to make your life easier? That's that's my goal. Um, and so, if you've ever seen um, Kingdom Death. Uh, uh, they have a beautiful box that I love, and so I want to do something kind of similar to that. Um, very slick, very kind of um, um, uh, minimalist style, but very beautiful. Um, so somebody had a question, oh, how do you do the door for the tower for the matter? So I'm actually not gonna do a real door. Um, I'll, I'll probably include one that's been destroyed in sort of some wood splinters, um, just kind of in this area, and that's why I left this space here open. Um, so what I'm gonna do, is uh, a window is often what you'll do, like I did here, is you just kind of glue up and around them and leave spaces, and then later on you can come back and rip these cool holes in the stonework. And I mean, when I say rip, it's literally as simple as like, you take a piece of foam and you rip a chunk out. And now, well, if I can possibly get that to focus. So you just so rip a chunk out. The entire technique right there is how this guy was made. Making yeah. stones looks incredible. You should show them the uh, lava piece when you're done uh, explaining everything. Oh, yes. I have the lava piece behind me, and I'm super excited about it. I definitely want to show that off. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to basically do for the, the door is um, I'm going to take probably, I have some, laying right here somewhere. Um, I have some coffee stirs, and what I'll do is I'll end up gluing them together and then kind of breaking them off into some pieces, and then I'll just have them sort of be scattered here around the uh, the floor and or around the outside. I may end up attaching a little bit extra to the outside here um, on this edge, uh, maybe a little bit of like groundwork or something like that, um, where I'll have some kind of broken splinters. Um, and then Windows is pretty is a lot easier than than you might think. It's a, it's just kind of um, I'll temporarily do it. Um, you just kind of stack these things uh, and leave little slots. And do, 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 do. I'm not even gonna glue them just because why not? There we go. And I mean, we're thinking like medieval times type stuff. Like this is just, you have a slit there. Now you can get really fancy and you can like take these and um, you know, using one of these cool little, what did you call this, Greg? Oh, no, I'm scattered, but uh, hopefully, thank you. Um, you can actually take these and slice like a nice little cut. So it's a little bit more realistic. And so what you'll have is, do, 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 do. If I can learn how to cut. Um, so with these two pieces like this, um, if this is if you if you the camera are at the internal of on the inside of the tower, there's this nice little slit so you can get good angles and uh, shoot through this smaller hole um, at people kind of down below you. And so what I'll do is kind of put this uh, like here and then kind of make some nice arrow slits. But I'll probably end up doing that on like a second floor because you wouldn't often find a, a win uh, at least I'd, I wouldn't normally put windows on like a lower floor of a tower like this. Yeah, a murder hole, exactly. Um, so uh, I wouldn't normally do it on like a first floor. I'd normally do it on a second floor. So as I'm building up all of these bricks um, and kind of building up floors, 
that's kind of what I'll put in. Um, I hope that answers your question. To do, to do. Take more glue. And like I said, this stuff is not like, this isn't, you know, super fine art. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, I'm just kind of slapping these bad boys on here and trying to figure out what might look good. And it looks like, you know, just goofy foam right now. But later on, when you actually put some paint on it and do a little bit of dry brushing, dry brushing is like I'm doing the right miracle now. workhorse. Yeah, exactly. It's the miracle workhorse of crafting. Like you start doing this stuff and you do a little bit of dry brushing and just kind of get this cool um, look on the stonework. I mean, you can actually see it on the pillars really well here. Um, just do a little bit of dry brushing and you just get the nicest texturing ever. And I mean, you can already see this here. Like, I didn't do anything fancy here. I just literally ripped a chunk of foam out and kind of painted it. And then I've told you, now you know <laughs> what the tech, the trick is. You can see it. Um, but when it's sitting on the table, it just looks like busted up rock. And so then you're gonna get this really nice little effect. So uh, yeah, okay, good. I'm, I'm glad that was helpful. I hope it was helpful. Um, so the one thing about doing brickwork is you end up gluing a lot of bricks, so many bricks. Um, yeah, so um, Gary, why don't we switch over to you for a little bit so you can kind of show your thing for, uh, show off all your cool painting skills. Yeah, so I finished a, a good chunk of it. I'm almost ready to call it done. I have a little bit of wash. I want to add to some pieces that didn't, don't quite have enough contrast, uh, but finished the dry brushing on the staff. So a little bit more detailed. Just finished the metallics on the spikes behind them and his flesh tones. I'm gonna try and use an oil wash and really get into like the muscle definition and like the arms and the hands. There's a weird noodle face. Uh, but, um, I'm happy where this is heading so far. Uh, but I, had a, I can't decide if I wanna make these like little gems up top uh, metal or like green. I guess if I wanted to match the one that I'm trying to replicate wherever I put him. Probably go metal, but his flame's green, so I can't decide. Mm -hmm. Something's so cool. Oh, somebody had a quick question. Um, for people that are used to dealing with grids on a map, how do you do the spacing? Um, so I actually will have like a ruler or something like that. I actually normally use um, grids on the map. Um, and sometimes what I'll do is I, I might actually come back uh, later and it would have been way easier and way smarter to uh, pre-cut some grooves here so that I would actually have um, some nice little grid lines. But I can always come back later and, and just to kind of quickly show you, um, this stuff is real easy to cut a nice straight little line in. And uh, uh, can you kind of see that? There you go. Um, so as soon as you kind of do that, cut some nice little one inch grids on here. Um, it's It's pretty simple. Um, I also kind of want to block out some of the uh, little busted up terrain I'm going to have in here, but it definitely would have been smarter to do that before. So learn from my mistake. Do that first. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to show them the massive terrain piece I made? Yes. Why not? Let's go ahead and uh, switch cameras really quick. Um, this thing is gigantic. Um, but here. Oh, also, if anyone in our campaign is watching right now, look away. Oh, yeah. Avert your eyes. You know who you are. Um, before I do dive into the super big thing, this is what you might look, might see. Oh, over here. This is what you might see for like a standard grid. Um, we, I'd do something like this, where you basically kind of cut it. Um, and then a technique that I saw, um, I believe, on Black Magic Craft was slice it with this thing, just like I just did. Um, it draw lines if you want to. It's actually easier to just go straight to slicing, but if you're if you're not comfortable with it, measure, draw a pencil the line first, and then cut it with this guy. And then what you can do is use like a pencil or a pin and uh, just slide it along this groove. So here, let me, let me switch back again. Um, so what you can do is you can kind of just take the pencil and slide it all along and excuse me, through this groove and just give it a little bit of a deeper impression. Do, 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 do. Hopefully you can see that. 
Um, yeah, it's already looking a lot, lot better. Um, so then once you've slid it through like that, um, it's a much, much clearer, you don't have to do it as deep as I just did, but uh, it gives you a lot better impression of the, um, of the actual grid line. And you would just do that across all of the grid lines and then you've got a really nice um, little space. And this will kind of like puff back up a little bit. It is foam, um, but not a ton. And so what you'll get is a very nice balance similar to what uh, Greg made with this guy, um, where you get some nice grooves. You can kind of cut some little holes just to sort of make it look a little beat up. Um, and again, this is just pink foam. Sealed with a little bit of Mod Podge. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what it would look like. So we actually do use grid on ours as well. Um, funny enough, on my big set piece, I didn't do it either. I didn't have you to remind me. Um, so well, I, actually, I actually didn't do the grid on the big one just because um, it would have taken far, far too long. So this thing is absurd. Uh, it is a massive, you know, I'm just gonna move my, my beautiful artwork out of the way so I don't destroy everything I've done. Try not to knock anything over. All right, um, so this gorgeous piece uh, is a little bit of a ritual site in, uh, uh, let's switch over to here, there we go. Um, so this thing's cool because all of these little pieces move. All of the stuff kind of in this kind of like lava flow area. Um, this thing's awesome because it's kind of pinned in so you can actually, I think you can take this out, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of pull this cool little ritual stonework piece out. Um, all like that, I just was able to cut out with the Ulfa blade. Yeah, and it's, and it's that same technique where it's just, you slice it up, you kind of give it some cool little groovy edges and then cut little symbols into it. That's a script for nothing. I don't think it says anything at all. Yeah, it's just gibberish. There was an actual alphabet I found, and then it's just gibberish. It's an ancient ritual, which means if you make this exact stone, your crafting skills will forever, forever be amazing. So make one. Um, so uh, this thing is actually going to be a super cool ritual site that will be coming up in our campaign. Greg got a little bit of a spoiler because he wanted to make something uh, amazing. Um, uh, I'm. I love this thing. It's so cool. I mean, even like if you haven't seen, you can't see this. Just... Um, if anyone's interested, I have a detailed uh, imager link where I went through all the steps that I did to make that entire thing. If anyone's interested, um, just post in chat, and I can try and get you a link. So I'm going to try to move the camera. I apologize if this makes you motion sick, but I just I have to show you this super awesome. Um, Oh, I'm losing everything. Um, so some of the details on this, he's got these cool marbles in here that like look like bubbles in the lava. And like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Just, just look at it, just observe with your eyeballs. There's okay. also LEDs in the lava, which I don't think the camera will pick up. No, there's no way, sadly. Oh, hello, hello garage roof. Uh, ceiling. Um, yeah, this thing is beautiful and like I don't know how on a difficulty scale Greg. What would you put this at? Th those stones like a two <laughs> so, <laughs> Slice 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 paint job <laughs> um, And honestly even the paint on this with the exception of like the lava like the paint on here is all simple It's nothing is nothing is crazy <laughs> Everything there you can probably figure out on your first attempt as an absolute beginner. And, and get this quality. Like, yeah. dry brushing is just, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's ridiculous how good it makes everything look. The no. only, like, really, like, weird thing I did is I used some nail polish near the, like, lava, like, waterfall to uh, dissolve the foam in, like, a specific way that I wanted. Because right. like the nail polish will just cause the foam. Same with spray paint will cause the foam to melt. Spray paint you can get away with if you like do small coats from far away, but if you blast it, it'll dissolve your foam. Yeah. Uh, yes, we have actually talked about selling terrain pieces. Um, one of the things that we had recently discussed, and we've been kind of tossing an idea, and feel free to let us know what you think. Um, we've been kind of playing with the idea of selling some kind of a limited. Um, uh, campaign set pieces and so this would be um 
This would be for a particular uh, event or encounter um, as a part of the crystal corruption. We wanted to actually sell basically a set where you can say, okay, for this boss fight or for this really cool encounter or for whatever this is, here's the super cool boss. Here's the mini that's that's been custom made for the crystal corruption. Um, and here's some custom terrain that we've crafted to go along with it. Um, we're kind of playing around with some ideas around that, but um, if you guys want to let us know kind of what you think, um, the idea would be you'd buy a box and you would get an entire encounter that would be, um, you'd, get, you'd have your terrain, you'd have your miniatures, you'd have um, the actual guide itself. And so we're kind of playing with some ideas of how we might structure that. And yeah, having a reasonable price point is going to be part of that. It's, it's a little bit of a premium because it is going to be custom crafted, custom painted. But if we're able to do this in bulk because we have enough interest, um, then we might actually be able to um, kind of pull this off and, and, and essentially have an entire night or multiple nights of, of worth of encounters in a single box, which would be super cool. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, the issue with selling like terrain in general, um, like if we were just put on our website and not being a part of the Kickstarter is, it would, we, we'd have to do it in such a limited quantity. Like if I were to sell that display board behind you, it's like that took me close to a week to two weeks working two to three hours a night, like trying to get that done. So trying to mass produce that for like everyone that would be interested would be a little bit tricky, but I could see us definitely, like if I finish a piece, we can throw it on our website and have like little one-offs, limited edition type things if you like it. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's definitely an interesting challenge. One of the things that um, uh, we're also looking at um, as a potential option would be kind of mass producing this through 3D printing. Um, so kind of creating um, really cool pieces like um, like the terrain that you just saw, set pieces like, uh, wrong camera, uh, like this, um, and scanning them and then creating 3D prints so that we can a little bit easier mass produce them. Of course, the difficult part being uh, the painting um, that would have to come after it as well. So we are playing with some ideas for that. Um, and uh, and Dungeon Tape, yeah, to answer your question, um, uh, or to, to kind of piggyback off what you said in the chat, yeah, uh, we actually we do want to make the packaging be storage for this. That's that's kind of a that's a really good um, um, concept that I personally, as a dungeon master, want for everything, every type of content that I buy. Because the number one thing I run into is where in the world am I going to store this stuff? I can't keep it in the little box it comes in because that's way too big, um, and honestly, it doesn't look good when it's stored. So is there a place that I can keep this? And so one of uh, my number one goal with the, the crystal corruption Kickstarter is have a box that's beautiful that you like keeping and is good quality so that you can actually store your miniatures, your book, your maps, the cards. If we can get all of the stuff kind of all mapped out and, and, and built uh, as part of the Kickstarter, then have this beautiful case that can be part of um, a part of your collection in your game room. Um, let's see, you could pare back the terrain, like print and cut the stone rocks and then have a printout of the lava to put under, then the rock would be a bit more universal and things like the altar could be a separate piece from the stone platforms. Yeah, yeah, exactly. that's a great idea. Exactly. So um, so there's some cool techniques that we're, we're, we're going to try to come up with and we're going to see if this works. What we may do, um, and so if you follow us on Instagram, if you if you're, um, have the newsletter on our website, um, uh, which by the way, if you do end up signing up for our newsletter, I have never sent a single email uh, for our newsletter. It's mostly there just in case we do something really big I'll send out an email. That's it. I, I don't spam. I don't send out um, a, a ton of, of promotional stuff through that channel. It's the most important, most high quality stuff that I as a dungeon master would want to get. That's the type of stuff I'm going to send out. I'm never going to spam you or sell it. I, I wouldn't know how to sell emails. So, so uh, just in case that's a worry. Um, but the idea is, is yeah, we, we want to build something really cool and package. And so if you, if what we may do is do like a limited test run. So if you follow us on Instagram, if you follow us on, um, or if you're on our newsletter, what we may do is come up with a limited run, kind of package it and do a pilot. Um, oh, our Instagram is uh, anima.games. Um, so if you want to see something like that, um, then uh, yeah, yeah, follow us and, and we might do a limited run where we, we build a couple of these pieces. We sell you an entire night's worth of like as a DM, here's the miniatures, here's the, here's the item cards, here's the actual campaign, here's the, some cool dialogue from you know, different NPCs. And of course, here's the terrain to go with it. We might sell an experience um, like that just to kind of give you a little bit more as, as a DM to play with. 
Um, my dream is I want to do something. This is, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek that I probably shouldn't do, but I'm going to do it anyways because it's fun. Um, there's been some cool tools that I've seen that help with organizing um, for a DM. And my goal is to actually give to create some of the tools. I'm, I'm a, a, pro, a programmer, as so is Greg, is actually, um, in our day jobs. Um, and we build uh, all kinds of cool stuff. But what I want to do is I want to build some software that helps managing um, that helps you manage like your terrain and your and your miniatures and give you direct access to go purchase things that you're missing. Um, so I'm building an inventory system that will essentially let you. Um, which minis do I have? I want to build an encounter, kind of like the D and D Beyond encounter builder. I need to build an encounter. Do I have that miniature because I've got too many, or I've got like I've got a bunch of them? They're all kind of thrown all over the place. If you're anything like me. I'm so disorganized. It's terrible. Um, but uh, I have trouble thinking of what do I have available that's in front of me while I'm building a separate encounter in like a different tool or, or in Roll20 or in D&D Beyond. Um, I want to build a system that, A, lets you organize those things. So you always know, I have this. Let me build a little shopping list because I don't have these things and give you uh, an opportunity to go buy prints of those miniatures either through us at Anima Games or through other folks who have those things, which would include terrain. Um, uh, we're looking at um, licensing terrain potentially later this year from printable scenery. Um, oh, hold on, Gary, I have to show. I have to show. We need to see what you're doing. <laughs> it's too. It's too beautiful. Um, finishing up some of the details. I finished some of the lighter washes on, like the browns and the skulls and everything, and then I bring back some of the details. Uh, get some more highlights on there. The thing's so beautiful. It's getting there. Yeah. So, so part of what I'm, what I'm, way too sneak peek. It's, it's. I really shouldn't probably be telling you this, but it's too much fun. Um, I want to build a way uh, for you to get those miniatures, um, and and including paper tokens because some people really like to use those. They're a lot cheaper. They're, they're way more cost effective. Um, and so, if you're not putting a ton of, if you're not an insane person like me, and you're not dumping an insane amount of money in this, and you want to do like paper tokens or something like that, we also want to sell those. Um, and have other people, other artists, uh, because this is a community, I want to have other artists be able to, to sell their, their prints, their miniatures, their tokens through this website um, uh, and through this tool. That's way too early. That thing does not exist yet. Um, it's something that I'm working on building. Um, but again, if you're following us on Instagram, then that's, that's something that you'll, you'll get to find out way earlier than anyone else. Um, we could probably also use this time to plug our Discord. If you want updates on all this stuff, uh, you'll get more oh, yeah. detailed things on our Discord. Yeah, um, I've actually um, I've been posting uh, concept art um, as my artist is creating it. Um, uh, if you, uh, I'll post the link to his uh, Instagram as well. Art of Terry Banada, um, Benedict Banada. I have no idea how to say his last name. Um, he's an incredible artist, and so from the from the uh, Kickstarter, we've been posting some early screenshots and, and some early artwork. Um, of concept art from the Crystal Corruption. So if you, we'll we'll post the link in uh, to our Discord um, on on Anima um, on the Anima Instagram um, and wherever else. I'm sure we'll find ten million places to post it. So just follow us on Instagram, and I'm sure you'll you'll get the link to it. Um, but yeah, so uh, in that Discord channel, we uh, talk about the game. Um, I actually I'm going to be doing some play testing um, of different content. So if you guys want to hear about that, and if you want to be a part of that, and help us build this and make it really really good please feel free to join us. Like that'd be something that's super, super cool. Um, once we get the Kickstarter started, I'm actually going to close the discord and it will become a reward. A reward tier as being a part of the Kickstarter or excuse me, being a part of the discord um, and joining the, uh, this, the, the specific channels that'll let you actually see the content early. Um, that way it, it kind of hides some of the stuff from, from players who might want to not get spoiled. <laughs> uh, okay. So I'm going to keep working on this, this cool tower. And then, uh, Gary, I want to see some more detail. Or excuse me, Greg, I want to see some more details on that. Um, that mind flare it looks so good. Well, let me finish up this while I have paint on my brush, and then I'll show you guys. But right now, I'm just building up some of the highlights on uh, skulls, doing a light glaze, so some of the shadows still shine through, and I can just keep building it up slowly. So. I don't know if you can see right now, but I did the first highlighting coat on that school right there. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, soon, so I don't know if I'm going to have time during this stream, but I'm painting this for one of uh, one of my friends. 
I was foolish and accidentally lost um, not one of our minis, but a mini that he had purchased. And I was like, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll print you one and then get it all painted up for you. But, but you can't leave out the most tragic part of that story. Oh, yeah. So I had a really nice Wormwood um, like character storage vault. And yeah, that's gone too. Nice black walnut. It was beautiful. I'm going to miss it. That's so heartbreaking. Oh, by the way, I'll put them in here and keep them nice and safe. I'm worried that I set them like on top of my car or something and then drove off. <laughs> my heart, it breaks. Um, somebody had a question for you. Uh, what kind of palette are you using? Uh, what is this? So, if I'm giving you any advice, I'd probably say make your own. You can buy these little cellulose pads for like mops for really cheap. And then all I'm using for the paper is your standard like butcher's paper, like parchment. Uh, was it? Yeah, parchment paper. Just Reynolds Kitchen basic parchment paper. What's this? Everyone probably has this in their drawer or at the local market you can just pick up for a couple bucks. Um, the one I'm using is called Master Sons. I can't even see that. It comes with some paper uh, that's pretty thick. Do not use that paper. That paper is meant for heavy body acrylics. So if you're like, my background actually comes from painting canvas. So it's like I was aware of like wet palettes and all that. Those papers do not work for mini paints. You're gonna have a bad time. The the water doesn't saturate through for these like thin body acrylics. Uh, it's meant for those like thick, heavy body. Um, but this butcher paper or this parchment paper is incredible. Um, another tip for your wet palette is, I don't know if you're in like a human environment or a dry environment. We're in California, so I don't really have to worry about this too much. So when I'm done, I can just seal this up, come back tomorrow, my paints are great. If you're in a human environment, um, if you leave this out overnight and you cover it up, your paints are gonna end up looking like this guy right here that's like super runny and not great. Um, you want to either put your lid on upside down so you get some air that flows into your like wet palette and dries out your paints a little bit, or you can cut off like the corner and that will allow airflow in and you just close it up and then you'll be good. That's if you're in a human environment. California, not an issue. Uh, so somebody had a question. Um, did you 3D print those pieces or are they the plaster Hearst Arts blocks? Um, I'm not sure. I'm guessing you're asking about these guys. Um, I actually just cut these on this hot wire cutter right here. Um, I've never, I'm not sure what the Hearst Arts blocks are, but uh, using this is, and you can actually also do the same thing with this. I'm just lazy, so I use the hot wire cutter. Um, take a piece of uh, styrofoam, doesn't matter where you get it from, unless you want the fancy stuff, which you can get from like a uh, home improvement store. You very slowly cut it through and hope your wire doesn't break. And now you've got a nice little block, uh, which you can then continue cutting up nicely, getting some cool little strips, um, which you can then eventually turn into. And so you just continue cutting this stuff up and eventually you'll get these nice little bricks like about this size. I, I think you're asking about this. Um, if not, Mrs. Gumby, big fan of your husband's work, um, feel free to uh, let me know and we can, we can answer or clarify. That may have been a totally useless answer. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, so I'm gonna continue gluing. Um, this is the one downside of building um, anything that is like a, uh, you know, old medieval castle type brickwork stuff. You just spend so much time gluing bricks. So much time. Now granted, I'm talking a lot, so I'm going a lot slower. Mm -hmm. What you can also do if uh, you don't want to spend a ton of time on cutting out individual bricks, in my opinion, that is what looks the best. But you can always just take your foam and like the back of like a paintbrush or like pencil and just carve your lines into it. And you just kind of build that up and you're just denting the foam. The pink foam doesn't work quite as great. Um, there's this foam you can get, I know, in like uh, the UK and any like European countries that 
takes like the imprint a lot easier. The pink foam is a little bit um, like not spongy, but a little bit more rubbery. It wants to go back, but you could probably do two passes with a pencil and kind of build up different depths of layers. So you can just go through and just trace out all of your brickwork and then it'll get the same effect. Just individual bricks is always going to look better. It looks so good. And then the nice thing about it is you can always just like cut these little bad boys up and do things like this where you leave holes. When you, when you do this kind of size, um, cutting out the individual bricks, you can like rip out nice little chunks and, and just leave yourself, you know, all kinds of wiggle room to, to play. And, and I, I love making bricks of different sizes. Um, even if it's on accident, I'm like, oh man, those bricks turned out totally uneven. That's totally okay. Like they'll, once you put them all together, like they'll, you'll never be able to tell. Like the, uh, this little set piece I made um, for the ritual site is a hot mess of mistakes of slicing up bricks. And, uh, you know, that problem aside, I think it still turned out good. Like you can barely tell. Like, but there's like, I mean, I've got weird little pieces. Let's see if you can see that uh, right about there. There are these little like triangular pieces I cut up and put in here. And uh, in, re in real life, um, uh, yeah, exactly. So dungeon tape as an architect, any real architect would look at my stonework and go, please, God, don't ever build a building, you giant idiot. Um, but for D&D purposes, it's great. <laughs> so the wash is almost dry for his base. Dungeon tape is never going to forgive me for my bricks. <laughs> Please don't ever build a building. Yep. <laughs> I promise you never to build a building any larger than what a D&D uh, &D miniature can fit in. But this is my solemn oath to you. Gluing, gluing, gluing. I think we are just about done. I think we're ending at 1.15. Um, yeah, three minutes left. Perfect. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to take a second. Since, since we're just a couple minutes away, I want to give the next folks time to prep. Um, and, well, obviously they have some time, but... Um, I just want to say thank you so much um, to Storm Giant Games for setting this up. Crowd Control Expo is so awesome. I'm super excited to see what other streams you guys are running, um, see what else you're doing. Um, if you want to find us on Instagram, it's anima.games. If you want to find our website, it's also anima.games, no.com, or nothing like that. It's very simple. Um, uh, we're also, um, we'll probably end up doing more streams like this. This was super fun. Um, and uh, our our shop is actually, we. Uh, I won't forget the links, I promise. Um, uh, I reopened the shop for just this weekend. I actually closed it because of uh, the um, because of coronavirus, and, and I apologize for saying the c word. Um, but because of that, I closed it just to make sure that I had the supplies. I got a bunch of extra stuff, um, but it's not a guarantee that I would have it for tons and tons of orders. So for just this weekend, we're going to be open. If you guys use use the code uh, Crowd Control. Um, on the website, it'll give you a 20% discount. So I'll be open for the weekend to add some more orders. It will take a little bit of time to print them. Like you can see, I print them all myself and I hand, like, you know, craft them and, and make sure that they're good. Like this guy, I have, oh, sorry, I haven't even finished removing supports from them. But we make them all right here, nothing crazy. Um, and of course, if you want them painted, then between me and Greg, we're going to make something amazing for you guys. Um, Again, thank you so much for joining us. If you guys have other questions, I'm going to post all of the links uh, in the Discord. Um, this has been super awesome. Thank you guys yeah, so much for joining us. Soon. Hey. Uh, thank you, Remy. Back. Yeah, no problem, Anthony. Thank you guys so much. We watched the whole thing upstairs. I'm glad we got some good comments and uh, other people watching and hanging out. Um, yeah. We, we posted about it in the chat, but we were looking through your website while you were streaming, and the stuff that they have at anima.games is freaking nuts. Like, the... There, I, there are minis that I never would have imagined. And like I said, we're in the abyss <laughs> in my game right now. And uh, that Asmodeus you have, some of those Balors on there are like... They're insane. so awesome. Insane. They're so, so awesome. It, it's been awesome to watch you guys work t today and um, stick around on the Discord and hang out. But uh, Yeah, we'll do, we'll do. Thank awesome. you so much for inviting us. This has been awesome. Of course, Thank yeah, we'll send you a link to the video. Will do. All right, guys, everyone have a great day. Thank you.